Father, we come before you, Lord, thanking you and praising you. We need you, dear God. Always we need you. And we need your mind. Dear Lord God, I pray for our church family, Emmanuel Church. Uh, pray that you pour special favor and blessing over them. And for our Facebook family and friends, please, dear God, bless them as well. Find favor of them, uh, protect them, and keep them, and may they feel your presence. And we pray this and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are studying the mind of Christ, part 14. What an what a amazing study uh, this has been. For me, personally, I need all this stuff. I need to be reminded of the amazing um, attributes that God has given us, the amazing, amazing attributes that He has made available to us, to all of us. So let's get right into the review as we uh, talk about what we, did, what we talked about last week. Now, we need at this point to reveal some of the schemes of Satan. We need to identify some of the powers and the spiritual forces of darkness and wickedness that are taking place in our world today. And there is a lot of wickedness taking place in our world today, isn't there? We need to realize that Satan is using at least 90% of news media to bring about his lies so that we can, he can cast fear into the hearts of people and plot out his demonic plan to take absolute control over all the world. Just as Satan lied to Eve in the Garden of Eden, Satan is lying to us right now through his controlled media. And this is local news, 90% of local news, 90% of radio news, 90% uh, of Facebook, Twitter, all kinds of media. He has control over it. How, you want to know how you can tell if it's, me, if it's Satan controlled? Do they speak about the things for God? Or do they speak about the things against God's word? 90% of the media is against the things that God, or God is for, and 90% of the media is for things God is against. That's how we can tell. Now, Satan must destroy America because we are the superpower that God used to formally hold any semblance of his Judeo-Christian values on this earth. America and any of its goodness through the, these Judeo-Christian values must be utterly destroyed. Remember, God wanted Israel to be that nation, to hold true to his word and his plans. But they fell to their sinful culture just as America is now falling to our sinful culture and its demands. So as we continue to explore... So here is what is taking place in our demonic-filled world. world. Satan has used the Chinese, China's godless government. We love the people, but the governments are what are corrupt. He used the godless Chinese government to manipulate a virus and used it to attack the world, but specifically the United States of America, to destroy the economic power that America holds. When you destroy the economy of America, its Judeo-Christian values are undermined to allow the setup of the Antichrist, the beast, and Satan to totally rule the world. Now, this coronavirus was not only formed to decimate the American economy, which, was, which is also going to decimate all the world's economies, so Satan can easily take over the world. The coronavirus is being used to set enormous fear into the hearts of the entire world. This fear is to get people to begin to follow mandates that do not really save them from the virus, but sets them up to receive, guess what, the mark of the beast. And here's how they're doing this. Many of the godless leaders of our cities and states are mandating the lockdowns, the wearing of masks, and the social distancing practices to train people to be subservient to them and consequently and ultimately to be subservient to the Antichrist, the beast, and Satan. Isn't that that's what's going on? So as we continue to explore this 
phenomenon, there is still great hope in this very evil world for God's people. We don't have to fear, but it's only in God's mighty power through his wisdom from above, which comes through scripture, the life-sustaining fruit of his Holy Spirit, and the constant wearing of his impregnable protective armor, battling the spiritual demonic forces. Now, we also need his mighty and powerful word, which is the sword. Are you ready? Are you ready, church? Are you ready, Facebook family and friends? Are you in the fight? Remember, God doesn't want us to live in fear. He doesn't want us to live in fear, but in faith. Yes, we ought to take precautions, but don't live in fear. He doesn't want us to live in fear because he has a... He has and will comfort us and protect us. And here it is. For God did not give us a what? Spirit. A spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear. But he has given us a spirit of power and love and of a what? Yeah. Sound judgment and personal discipline. Abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. 2 Timothy 1, seven, and I, that's the amplified version. It also says, fear not, fear not, for I am blank. What is it? Say it loud. With. I am with you. God is with us. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will. Hey, I will what? uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's Isaiah 41.10. Isn't that amazing? What a blessed God we have. He's, he's here with us. He's here with us by the power of His Spirit. So let us continue uh, exploring this. Now, that was in review. Here is today's word. God's holy word is applicable to every situation of life. So, we have studied in the past few Sundays the need for the wisdom from above. The wisdom from above is pure, peaceful, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. No Christian should have any prejudice or any partiality to anyone of any color, race, ethnicity, uh, any, uh, whether they're rich or poor, we should have no partiality to anyone. We should love everyone. Amen? We need the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, which is patience. Long-suffering, patience, long peace, gentleness, goodness, faith, and godly self-control. And along with the fruit of the Spirit, we need the necessity of putting on the armor of God, which is the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the gospel shoes, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the, of the word, and praying in the spirit. All of this spiritual equipment is to defend and fight the evil, dark wickedness in the spiritual realm. And at the same time, we are to be a servant. We're still to be a servant. Remember, we just got through part three of being a servant, a ser of servanthood. We're to be a servant to all of our sisters and brothers in Christ and a servant to witness to the lost world who do not know Christ. Now, this is an enormous calling God has given to us, his people. We are his people. However, God has more than amply given us every spiritual tool and weapon we need to be victorious against any and all schemes of the devil and to do all the spiritual work he wants to do through each and every one of us. Amen? Again, I give a shout out to those who handed out um, the, the lunches for the homeless because we also gave them not only physical food, but we gave them the Word of God. 
Amen. Well, let's continue on as we explore what, what else God has for us. So the question is, what do we do to specifically use all of, these, all of this spiritual equipment? Where do we apply all these spiritual tools and weapons? Well, let us seek God's guidance and direction in His Word in the book of Jude. Here it is, Jude chapter 1, verse 1. Jude, a bond servant of Jesus Christ. Another word for that is slave. Jude, a slave of Jesus Christ. And I pray that you will uh, become comfortable with being a slave to Jesus Christ. And the brother of James. So Jude and James were brothers. They were also half-brothers of Jesus. Mary had many more children after Jesus. Amen? Amen. So Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, half-brother of Jesus, writes this letter to those who are the what? The called. You're called. We have a calling. Praise God that God himself called us. The President of the United States hasn't called you. The President of France hasn't called you, but God has called you. Amen? Amen. God's chosen ones, the elect, dearly what? Love. Dearly loved by God the Father. God loves us. And blank. <laughs> keeps. He keeps us secure and set apart for Jesus Christ. May mercy and peace and love be almost said it. What is it? Multiplied to you filling your heart with the spiritual well-being and serenity experienced by those who walk closely with God. Brothers and sisters, we are encouraging each other to walk closely with the Lord Jesus Christ. Closely. The closer you get, the better off you are. Amen? So walk closely with, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved, while I was making every effort to write to you about our common what? What is it? Salvation. Jude wanted to write about salvation, but the Holy Spirit was compelling him to write about something very, very important. He says, I was compelled to write to you urgently, appealing that you blank. That you what? Fight. Fight strenuously for the defense of the faith which was once for all handed down to the saints. The faith that is the sum of Christian belief that was given verbally to believers. Now understand, all, all, the, all, the, all the words of God hadn't been completely canonized into one, one Bible yet. So let's continue on as we continue to read what Jude had to say. We are to contend or fight strenuously for faith in Jesus Christ and all faith which emulates from His life and His works. Amen? We're to fight. We're to fight. We don't fight uh, flesh and blood. We fight the principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, uh, spiritual wickedness in, in heavenly places. We are fighting a spiritual war. Amen? This is what we are to, to use all of the spiritual equipment for, to fight strenuously. Give it all you got for faith in Jesus Christ and all true, true Christianity. Telling and warning everyone what is the real and true reality of what is really going on in our world today about the fight. And here it is. The fight isn't between flesh and blood. The fight is between God versus Satan. It's, it's God's good versus Satan's evil. There's no in-between. You're either on God's side or you're on Satan's side. Now, here's some questions, excuse me. Do you think a lot of Christians fight strenuously for the faith in Jesus and all that emulates from him? Do you? Do you and I fight strenuously for Jesus and true Christianity? I pray that we will start, if we're not. I pray that we will fight strenuously for faith, contend for the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and true Christianity. Now, 
Here, here is why it is important and necessary to fight strenuously for our faith in Jesus and all true Christianity. Let's explore what Jude says. Jude 1, chapter 1, verse 4 says, For certain, get this, for certain people have crept in unnoticed into the church, just as if they were sneaking in by a side door. They are ungodly persons whose blank. Anybody know that? Whose condemnation was predicted long ago. For they distort the what? The grace of of our God into decadence and immoral freedom. We have a lot of people who take their freedom in Christ and they, and they become immoral. They say it's, they become Im, immoral in all their behavior, viewing it as an opportunity to do whatever they want and deny and disown our only master and Lord, G, Lord what? Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ. Now, just a reminder, children, I have those paperwork back there for you to do so that you can get some more prizes. And I have prizes to give to you uh, for, for last week. So let's fill out those paperwork and do that coloring. Now, this is talking about people, now listen carefully, this is talking about people who are entering the local church and bringing in false doctrines and immoral practices which are against God's holy word. And this is what is happening in our churches today, except these false immoral people aren't even coming in the back door. They are coming in the front door with the pastor holding the door for them. Then the church boards vote these false immoral people to become teachers and pastors. So let's continue to explore this phenomenon. Now, we all welcome all people, but not to teach false doctrine. We want diversity, but not corrupt teachings. Now, maybe you've never heard this before. Not all diversity is good. It's not always a virtue to have diversity. Why? Because sometimes, in fact, a lot of times, diversity brings in much opposition to God's word. Now check this out. God never designed our world to be partially spiritual and partially secular. God designed the world to be all spiritual with Him at the forefront of all of our lives. Now the diversity I'm talking about is not the different colors of skin or ethnicity. I'm talking about the belief systems and the immorality that are contrary to God's word. I welcome anybody's skin color or ethnicity, but I am and we are to stand guard against or contend strenuously, to fight strenuously for the faith and the truth of God's holy word, the Bible. Is there an amen in the house? Amen. Right. amen. Well, let's continue on as we explore this phenomenon further. Example, skin color and ethnicity is a good diversity as long as what they believe is consistent with God's holy word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Example, homosexuality, and I'm not judging anybody, homosexuality and transgenderism is diversity that is evil because it is against God's word and design for his human creation. Homosexuality and transgenderism are not the same, but they are very closely related. Let's look into some of the things about those lifestyles. Homosexuality, according to the Word of God, is an abomination in God's Word in Romans 1, 24-27. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness, immoral, impure, through the blank. The lusts, yes, thank you, Brother Fred. The lusts of their own hearts to dis dishonor, despise, bring shame to their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the what? The truth of God into a what? 
A lie. Yes, thank you, Jeannie. And blank. Worshipped and served the what? The creature more than the creator. Brothers and sisters, again, I'm not trying to judge anybody, but people who are involved in homosexuality and transgenderism and any sin are worshiping their own sexual orientation more than God. And what is the first commandment? Thou shalt not have false gods before him. So because of this, for this cause, because God is against that, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, shameful lust. He just gave, gave up on there because they wouldn't turn. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against, thank you, against nature, which is actually against God's design. And likewise, also the men leaving another, men with blank, men with men, I gave it to you, the men with men working that which is unseemly, it's indecent and receiving in themselves that penalty of their error which was due they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. Let's look at some of those penalties. We must remember, again, we must remember, we do not hate anyone. We do not hate the sinner who are opposing God's word. We are to love them and humbly give them the truth of God's holy word. Right? We don't hate anybody. That's wrong. Let me share with you some of the statistics from several sources about the homosexual and transgender lifestyles. The homosexual lifestyles takes off 20 to 25 years from the individual's life. The homosexual lifestyle includes the getting of STDs, including HIV. And you, you all know what STDs are, and if you don't, I'll explain it after. 40 times more. They get STDs 40 times more than heterosexual men and women. Now, transgender people suffer the same types of lusts as homosexuals, which bring on some of the same diseases as homosexuality, which include a lot of psychological issues for both groups. There's much suicide in these groups. And it's not because people are against them, it's because they're against their own bodies. They've despised and defiled their own bodies. Well, let's continue to look further. When we allow our flesh to control our minds and when we do not restrain our lusts, they will lead us to enormous amounts of psychological disorders which cause us a lot of mental pain and illness. This is because, because God gives us over to our lustful desires when we choose not to restrain them. As Christians, we must humbly and caringly warn homosexuals and trans transgenders that God still sees this as sin. Another example of false ideas creeping into our culture and churches is, have you heard the term karma or bad karma? Anybody? Raise your hand if you've heard that term. Okay. Well, I've heard this term by many people, even among Christians, and it is a diverse term. It's a diverse term from India. It's actually a term from the Buddhist and Hindu religions, which means the sum of a person's actions in this and previous states of existence are viewed as deciding their fate in future existences. Karma is a term for a works-based religion which has no reference to the saving, atoning blood of Jesus Christ deciding a person's future. It's, it's false. Well, let's look further into that. Karma is a diverse belief system that is false and should be kindly 
and lovingly rejected and pointed out to those who hold this kind of term or this kind of belief. In heaven there will be, now, now get this, in heaven there will be a large, diverse group of people, but we will all have the same mind, which is the mind of Christ. If we do not all have the mind of Christ, there would be conflict in heaven, just like there is here, conflict here on earth. We, we all have to have the same mindset as Christ because this is where the harmony and peace come from. Now, listen, there's great diversity in being in the mind of Christ, but there is no sin. There is no opposition to God's word. We will all be different, but we will all have a righteous mind of Christ. Isn't that awesome? So, so we as mature Christians, we need to humbly correct those who are using this term or believing in this and other false belief systems and point them to the atoning blood of Jesus. This is, why, this is how we contend for the faith. This is how we fight strenuously for the faith. Well, let's, let's look further. In Jude 1.5, Now I want to remind you, although you are fully informed once and for all, that the Lord, after saving a people out of the land of Egypt, now remember, the, remember the, the Israel was in Egypt. He was, they were under harsh rule and he saved them out of the land of Egypt. He subsequently did what? Destroyed those who did not believe, who refused to trust and obey and rely on him, whether they were Egyptians or Israelites. Just as God destroyed the unbelieving Egyptians, he is going to destroy all the unbelieving in this world also. He's going to send them to blackness of darkness forever, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, as Christians, with the love of God in us, we should grieve about the loss just as Christ does and how he grieved for our lostness. Do you grieve for the lost, brother and sister? Friends, do you pray for them? Do you witness to them? We all should. Well, let's continue on. In Jude 1.6, and the angels, now we're going to talk about the angels who fell from heaven. The angels who did not keep their own designated place of power, but what? They abandoned their proper dwelling place. These he has kept in eternal chains under the thick gloom of utter darkness for the what? Judgment. The judgment of the great day. They, are, they, are, they have a cloud looming over them that God is going to judge them and cast them into the lake of fire. Let us look further into... Now, I don't know if you know this, but one third of the angels of heaven sinned and were thrown out of heaven with Satan. Now, does anybody wonder here about those unidentified flying objects that are so prevalent in the news sometimes? UFOs. You know where they come from? Here's an idea. How about from the demonic, evil, spiritual world? These demonic angels gave their allegiance to Satan and thinking Satan was going to be God. How eternally wrong they are. Well, let's look further. In Jude 1.7 it says, Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the adjacent cities, there was two more cities that were destroyed by, by a fire. And the adjacent cities, since they in the same way as these angels indulged in gross immoral freedom and unnatural vice and sensual perversity, they are exhibited in plain sight. And as an example, in undergoing the what? The punishment of how long is this fire? Everlasting. Everlasting fire. Nevertheless, in the same way, these dreamers who are dreaming that God will not punish them also what? Defiled the body and reject legitimate authority and revile and mock angelic majesties. 
Now, do we realize that we're still talking about people in the church? Some people in the church or churches? Now, do you know what the definition of sodomy is? I'm not going to explain it because there's children. Um, it is not good, and God destroyed those cities because of these immoral acts. Now, these are the same homosexual and transgenders that are in line with the same judgment as Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, let's look further. In Jude 8, but even the angel Michael, he's a very powerful angel, when he was disputing with the devil, with Satan, and arguing about the body of Moses, Michael did not dare bring an abusive condemnation against Satan, but simply said, the Lord, what? Rebuke you. Yes, thank you, Jeannie and, State, and uh, Fred. The Lord rebuke you. But these men sneer at anything which they do not understand and whatever they do not know by mere instinct. Like unreasoning and irrational beasts, by these things they are what? Destroyed. The evil de demonic spiritual angels will be destroyed by their own evilness and the judgment of God. Well, as we continue to look further, in Jude 11, it says, Woe, which means judgment to them, for they have gone the defiant way of Cain. Cain decided he wasn't going to sacrifice the way God said to. He was going to do it his own way. And then for, and, and, and for profit, they have run headlong into the era, error of Balaam. Now, Balaam was a prophet of God. But the king Balak wanted to pay Balaam to curse Israel. So Balaam asked God if he could curse Israel. God said, what, are you crazy? No, you can't. He, and he asked him three, three times, and he kept saying no. But Balaam was after money. He was after riches. The king ba Balak was going to give him all kinds of money. In the end, he, Balaam uh, stabbed Israel in the back and God and told King Balak to have his people be, do sexual immoral things with the Israelites and that would uh, uh, cause them to fall. And eventually that did happen. <clears throat> and, then, and then the next part, and blank in the rebellion of mutinous Korah perish, and perish in the rebellion of mutinous Korah. Now, Korah was a group, of, was, was, a, was a family, Korah was a man and he had a family, 250 of them, um, and, and they decided, well, we don't, we, we, we're just as good as Moses, we don't need to hear from him, we don't have to obey him, yet God said that Moses was one of the most humble men of the, of the earth. Moses wasn't lording over them like, a, like a, a, a tyrant. He was a gracious man to the, to the children of Israel. And Korah, they wanted to take over. But God saw the, the evilness in their heart and he opened up the earth and swallowed them all in. Now, still we're talking about the church. People have snuck into the church and, and, and through the culture. These men are hidden reefs, elements of great danger to others. In other words, a boat doesn't want to go near, anywhere near a reef because it tears up the bottom of the boat and it sinks. In your love feast, when they feast together with you without fear, looking after only what? Themselves. They are like clouds without water swept along by the winds. Autumn trees without fruit, doubly dead, uprooted, and lifeless. Wild waves of sea flinging up their own shame like foam, wandering stars for whom the gloom of deep darkness has been reserved forever. It was about these people that Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied when he said, look, the Lord came with a myriad of his holy ones to what? 
to execute judgment upon all and to condemn all the ungodly of all the ungodly deeds they have done in an ungodly way and of all the harsh and cruel things ungodly sinners have spoken what? Against him. Let's continue on. In Jude 16, these people are habitual murmurs, griping and what? Complaining. complaining. Brothers and sisters, do we really have things to complain about? No. Maybe things aren't going the way we want them to go, but we have nothing to complain about because God will work all things to our good. And complaining, following their own desires, controlled by passion, they speak arrogantly, pretending an, an admiration and what? What do they do to people? Flattering people, yes, to gain an advantage. These are the demonic powers we are fighting against, which is why we need to put on Christ and all his protective armor and to walk in his spirit using the word of God as our offensive weapon. Amen? And so, and so will the unbelievers here on earth who follow their own lusts and desires using the same principles as Satan did in wanting to be God. Unbelievers want to deny the one true God also so that they can be their own God as well. We need the Lord God to be our God. Well, let's, <clears throat> let's uh, look further. In Jude uh, 17 through 23, he says, But for you, what? Beloved, remember the prophetic words spoken by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They used to say to you, here it is. In the last days, there will be scoffers following after their own ungodly what? Passions. These are the ones who are agitators. Is there any agitation going on in our world? Causing divisions. Is there any division in our world? Worldly minded. Is there any worldly minded people in here? In the world? Secular. Unspiritual. Carnal. Merely sensual. Unsaved. And they are devoid of what? Spirit. The Spirit. But you, beloved, you, brothers and sisters, but you, beloved, build yourselves up on the foundation of your most holy faith. Continually progress and rise like an edifice, higher and higher. Pray in the what? In the Holy Spirit. And here it is. If you don't get anything out of this message, keep yourselves in the love of of God. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Read the word, study the word, obey the word. Pray in the spirit, waiting anxiously and looking forward to the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, which will bring you to eternal life. Amen. Isn't that awesome, church? Bring you bring us to eternal life. And have mercy on some we have to have mercy on, on, on the unbelievers who are doubting. We need to point them to Jesus. Save others, snatching them out of the fire. And on some have mercy with fear because they're so close to, to Satan's activities. Have mercy with fear, loathing even the clothing and, and spotted and polluted by their shameless immoral freedom. Let's finish up as we... Here we are to be fully armored servants of God, keeping ourselves in the love of God, being in the Word, obeying the Word, praying in the Word, witnessing of His great love and mercy and grace, using the unchanging foundational truths of the Bible to reach out to the lost with the only message of hope which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, he, Jude closes up, says, Now to him who is able to keep you from what? Stumbling, Stumbling or falling into sin and to present you what? Unblemished, blameless and faultless in the presence of his glory with triumph and joy and unspeakable delight. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He's going to present us 
blameless because his blood has cleansed us. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power before all time, now and how long, church? Forever. Forever. Amen. Well, let's close up with the next, in the next PowerPoint screen. In conclusion, so any person who knows what is right to do but does not do it, to him it is a sin, including me. Now, here it is. We are to use the wisdom of God, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, put on the armor of God with the mindset of a servant. We are to defend God, His Word, His people, His kingdom with every ounce of God-given love, humility, strength, and all of our mind for His glory. Are you in? Are you in? Amen. Now, church and Facebook family and friends, friends, Please, let us ask God right now as we close in prayer to give you, ask God with all your heart to give you a born-again saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You must have a transformation of your life. Let's pray. Father, we come before you, Lord, thanking you and praising you. We ask you, dear God, to give those who are not saved to give them a born-again, saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. At least give them that desire to know you and to be transformed from the inside out, to be transformed and born anew, born from above. I pray to God that people will bow the knee and ask you to save them, to give, you, to give them born-again, saving faith. They can't do it. It's not by their will. It's by your will. It's by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, please come into the hearts and lives of those who will seek you with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind, and all their strength. And we pray this and ask this in your precious Son's name, your Redeemer Son's name. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, church. God bless you, Facebook family and friends. I'll see you next week. Be sure to pray that prayer and ask for saving born-again faith in Jesus. God bless you.